Welcome to part two of the DIY Yagi project. Here is the Yagi finally put together, mounted on the tower. You'll see there, let me zoom in. That's the 10 turn ugly balin used to shield against the uh, common mode. It's a good choke for that. Uh, I had to extend out the drive shaft, the rotator shaft, so that I could get a newly acquired Alliance antenna rotor mounted somewhere around the base. So I had to offset that shaft to give me enough room at the base to put it in and keep it all straight. So that required a little bit of work. As you see right now, it's parked on a couple of pieces of uh, steel uh, scaffolding, steel staging. I was able to get it up into partially raised position by using the planks as uh, fulcrums and levers and getting it up as high as I could right there. The rest of it is going to be winched up with this setup I have here going up into the tops of trees and uh, that line stretches out into a, an attach point where I have a couple of come-alongs in series. So that's how I intend to get it up. This step ladder here is just to keep that tip off the ground, that tip of the director, because the drive shaft is off center, that is the boom is mounted off center to the drive shaft, uh, it tends to favor this side. So I have the director propped up here. When I had this thing tuned up over in this area over here, away from any obstructions or metal pieces, I was able to get pretty much 30 to 35 ohms uh, with just a few ohms of reactants with the whole hundred uh, foot of line and the ugly balin. So I'm very hopeful that that's what I'll get when it's fully airborne after, uh, I hope that goes well to the end of today. Right now the resident point has uh, moved up a little bit beyond the, well, it's about 14 dot 600, 700, something like that, beyond the, uh, the assignment of the 20 meter band for amateur use. So, uh, whereas before I was getting uh, 1.2 to 1.6 SWR with uh, no tuner or anything, uh, pretty flat from 14.000 to 14.300. So, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the fact that the thing is currently aimed directly to the ground and also because we have this steel staging that it's reacting with, but we'll see. Although I have to say, I uh, put it together with this thing even closer to the ground with a director right on the ground, went in just to test the, uh, see how it swept with the antenna analyzer. And I immediately got a uh, contact uh, out in western Pennsylvania, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, worked really well. So I just hope it works when we get it up there. So time to go start tugging on the come along and see what happens. Taking a little half time here. Things appear to be going pretty well. I just tried uh, grabbing the rotator shaft and it certainly pivots and there isn't much down thrust on it. I can push the, uh, push the thing up uh, along the longitudinal axis of the tower. So uh, it's just the inertia of the uh, of the beam itself is all that Alliance rotator is going to have to deal with. We're somewhere around 45 degrees here. The come-alongs have gotten noticeably easier, although they were never really under that much of a strain. So I think it's going pretty good. Just taking a little half time, have to reposition the come-alongs to get a better purchase because we're out of scope. They're, they're too blocked and it's time to move them. By the way, you also see I have these about a quarter of the way up, maybe a third of the way. I have these two guys. Those I salvaged from some spares that I had saved, some old uh, lower shrouds uh, from my sailboat. 
if I hadn't mentioned that before. Also, uh, I think in the first video I mentioned that this was part of a Rome tilt tower. Well, depending on the terminology, that might be right. This is actually the lever arm for what is known as a Rome foldover tower. So for a 60-foot tower, it might be hinged mid midpoint, and this would be some sort of a jib that stuck out to give you the leverage to uh, lower it and uh, return it, re refly it up when you were done to the full 60 or 70 feet. Okay, back to work. Well, folks, there it is. She's up there. No problem at all. It's clearing my OCF wire, which you probably can't see, by about, oh, a good eight feet or so. I'll focus there just so you can see it. So that's it. Pointed to the west. I'm very pleased with how straight it's going. Of course, I'm going to have to get it perfectly plumb a little bit later. But at least from the ground here, that looks pretty fine business to me. By the way, here is, let me get a little bit better here. Okay, you see I used PVC electrical conduit. This is the drive shaft and I had these sleeves up there. They're more just to keep the drive shaft from wobbling around. Very low friction on them. All the friction is on that thrust bearing that I showed you in the first video. And somewhere down between right here my fingertips and the ground I have to rig a platform and put the Alliance rotor but that's pretty good a little bit of sailorizing some junk from a silent key sail a free Aggie that somebody outgrew oh and less than 200 hours of parts and there it is I'm in business I can't wait to see what the reactance is let's go inside and check it out this is the epilogue. As it turned out, once I got the Aggie up in the air, the uh, resonant peak did not change back to what I had measured on the saw horses in my original setup. So that was a little disappointing, but uh, that's what happens when you make assumptions. So at the suggestion of K1WTX, I lowered the Aggie, and this time I reoriented it so that the uh, it was pointing up in the air that is the driven element was closest to the ground and the director was uh, above it and uh, sure enough I was able to get the thing to come in really well and this is the result you see here on 20 meters 1.4 not bad 1.2 at 14.030 1.1 at 14.050 all the way up to about 14.125 so 1.1 for most of the CW subband not bad and if we sweep all the way out here to 350 starts to get higher we're out of the resonant point but we're still still less than 2.0 so that's not bad and that will easily tune with the MFJ uh, 10 meter results weren't quite as good but uh, there you go I'm going to declare this project a success and uh, go outside and finish the final bolting up and make sure that it doesn't fall down so that's it DIY Yagi project from KB1 ZMX